Hello, my name is Yvette Williams and the artwork that I chose that would fit into this course, Art of China Well, is the painting A Thousand Li of Rivers and Mountains created by Wang Xing. 1113. Sorry if I pronounced their name incorrectly. So what does this painting look like? This painting is on a very long silk scroll and it contains a greenish sunset background with beautiful green and blue mountains. Um, this image is also to believe to be a landscape of southern of a certain landscape in southern China. Aside from the beautiful green blue sunset and the green blue mountains, there is some scripture on top of the painting and then there is also signs of human activity in the painting. There is a small handmade bridge in the painting and there is also temples and what it looks like to be houses in the painting. Even though these are in the paintings, the majority of the painting is of the landscape and the hand, the man-made objects are a very small part of the painting. Above the painting there is a written poem by King Wong at the beginning of the painting and postscripts by Kei Jing from the Song Dynasty at the end. Um, it is in a permanent collection of the Palace Museum in Beijing and the scroll size is 51 by 5 by um, 1,191.5 centimeters. Sorry if I pronounced some of those names wrong. The materials for the scroll, scroll that are used is black ink and ground pigments on a long silk scroll. The accuracy of the way the mountains look, the way that rocks look, just the way the overall landscape looks, it solidifies um, the idea that the artist was actually from southern China because of the accuracy of what it actually looks like in real life compared to this painting. 1,000 of Lee of Rivers and Mountains is a metaphor for the emperor's longevity of the dynasty everlasting prosperity. Sorry, that part is hard for me to say. So like it's pretty common. This is kind of a painting for the emperor showing hope, dream, desire, glorious future, um, which is, is pretty common in Chinese culture. If something is referencing a leader, an emperor, to kind of idealize um, a painting for them, show a metaphor of maybe their afterlife or their current life that they're living in. And this painting, again, it's a beautiful landscape and that does properly show like images of like hope and dream. The artist of this painting um, died at a very young age, I believe the age of 23 and they created this painting at the age of what it's said to be 18. This is the only work from this artist that that is here today. There is no other traces of um, this artist's work, which is a reason why it is a famous painting as well. One reason that I think this painting should be introduced to this class is because of its green and blue landscape technique. In the lectures, for the semester. This technique has not been talked about, but yet it is a very important style in Chinese ink painting. This painting is also an ink painting if I haven't mentioned that. During this period of ink, during this period when this painting was made, ink painting was very popular and it was dominated, but it was more popular to do it on a light purple landscape. The green blue landscape technique first appeared in, during the Tang Dynasty in AD 1618 through um, 907 and this painting is a great example of this technique. I feel like if we included this painting into the lectures, a gap that I could fill in is another style technique of the blue and green landscape. The blue and green landscape is a signature style from the Tang Dynasty and anyone that used this technique after um, the period of the Tang Dynasty would have to would have to reference the Tang Dynasty in its artistic glory. So that is just more proof of how important um, the blue and green landscape technique is to China because now if it is used, it has to be referenced to the Tang Dynasty. This painting was also a part of the Northern Song Dynasty period 9, 
1160 through 1127. And this was one of the greatest periods of Chinese painting. Most, painting during, most paintings during this time period, ink paintings during this con time period, consisted of black and red ink. But this scroll used very bright colors for its time period. It is bright, but things are brighter. But for this time period, very bright colors with the blue and green ink. And it just kind of separates it from other paintings but it is still a very important technique in Chinese history because it is part of the Tang, it originated from the Tang Dynasty. Another reason why I believe this painting should be introduced to our class is because of the great use of color. This is from the help of the blue and green landscape technique, but overall, a lot of the painting in China, they do use, some do use vibrant colors, but with typically ink paintings, vibrant colors aren't really that popular at least from what i've seen in the lectures and so this being in the lecture i feel like would just show the capacity of chinese art and that they're able to use these beautiful saturated colors the really saturated blues the really saturated greens um this helps and focus on light and shade and texture rather than just outline shapes and forms is which is what I feel like is seen with just the other ink paintings that we have seen before. Another technique that is used in this painting that I don't believe was touched on in the lecture was the three distances technique. This is another technique and this technique was actually strongly promoted at Wang School which is this artist that created this painting at the Imperial Painting Academy. According to the online Chinese museum, um, the three distances is a concept that fuses three visual angles to imply a panoramic view of thousands of kilometers across without losing a sense of context. So these are the three different distances. I might pronounce these incorrectly, so I'm sorry um, beforehand. The first one, the first angle is called Gaon or high distance. The second angle is called Shewan or deep distance and then the third one is called Pingyuan which is level distance and in this painting you can see that there is basically a foreground middle ground background and there's just a lot of layers in this painting that you can see different angles you can see different things different perspectives there's just a lot of going on in this painting and it is a huge painting and your whole eye across the painting could just see a lot of different basically perspectives and I think that is the help because of this technique of the three distances and again this technique I don't believe is touched on in the lecture and so that is another reason why I feel like be important to include this painting and this technique into the lecture because there's probably other paintings that are used in Chinese history that use this technique and is probably really important to it is really important to Chinese another school. technique that is used in this painting that is important to Chinese culture and important to this painting is that they decided to divide this painting up into six sections there is many aspects to this painting aside from the nature there is lakes folks cottages pavilions bridges and even more and the reason why they divide it up into six sections is so you can a person can focus on each section individually instead of just kind of getting lost in the huge landscape. Another technique that was used in this painting that I believe that was not touched on is the axe cut um, texture stroke technique. And with this technique, it helped them create the really great three-dimensional forms, rocks, mountains in this painting. And that was also with the help of the hemp fiber texture stroke. And this helps depict the rough surfaces of the rocks and mountains. So those are just some other techniques that I believe I haven't heard in the lecture and I feel like would be very interesting to hear and beneficial. The last reason why I believe that this um, painting should be in the lecture is because of its popularity this is actually one of the most famous paintings in chinese history and i'm not saying that in the lecture we should only famous focus on like famous artworks i think it is great to include all type of important artworks from all types of history in china but this is one of the most famous paintings in 
China, so I thought it was a little bit interesting that it wasn't included in the lecture. And then another reason why I feel like it would be nice to hear about this painting is honestly because this artist, this is the only painting that they have. They mysteriously kind of like disappeared from records like at the age, like I said, 23. And it's just kind of sad to hear, but I think it's interesting to know that and kind of like keep their like legacy alive because this is the only painting that they have and it is so beautiful and it's such a great example of the blue and green landscape technique and so many other techniques in Chinese history that I feel like it should be included in the lecture. Some questions that might be brought up is why was it not as popular to use like the green and blue ink and the green and green landscape compared to that common like purple lands like purple landscape and black and red ink and I think that would be interesting to figure out why maybe it has something to do with like color symbolism or like just like during the time maybe it was just like seen as better to use like more muted colors but that is one question that could be brought up why I mean another question that could be brought up is what happened to this artist and why is this the only piece that we have from them like yes they died at the age of 23, but this piece was made at the age of 18. So why is this piece the only piece that we have from him? And this is sad, but that is a question that can be brought up. Another question that can be brought up is why is this painting so famous? It's one of the most famous paintings in China. Probably do because, probably because of it being one of the few paintings with the blue and green landscape style, but why this painting is it because of the realism is it because of the meaning behind this painting is it because it was for the emperor is it because of the scripture that was in the painting why is this painting so famous and so important to chinese art history